The Apostle Paul talks about us as the body of Jesus. When you say that you are the body of someone, it is a very intimate way of relating to that person. Yet the Apostle Paul calls us the body of Jesus. And the logic that when you look at Christ as your life, and that whosoever and whatsoever Jesus is, that that is what you are now, is the foundation that the Apostle Paul uses to explain how we should live in this world. Now, I would like to read from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. It reads as follows. It says, I want you to put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and that you would be renewed in the spirit of your mind or in your mind, in the core of your thinking, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So what the Apostle Paul is saying is simply this, is that there is a new creation This new creation is Jesus Christ. And now that we are in Christ and have believed upon him, that this new life or this life that Jesus was raised up into in his resurrection, that we clothe ourselves with that. Now, I remember in the days when I was thinking of putting on the new man, it was basically seen as a work, as a command start to live right. It wasn't much different than the Old Testament, wherein we had a list of laws and rules and that you put on the new man and that you don't walk according to the flesh and that you live right. The Apostle Paul doesn't have that in mind. The Apostle Paul has new creation in mind. He takes new creation, that which Jesus Christ rose up into, as something very serious, real, and even physical. He says that we are the new man or that there is a new man and that he's created in true righteousness and that we, in our minds, clothe ourselves with that man. What that simply means is that you know that that is true about you. A very good way to understand that is to just liken it to the old South Africa and the new South Africa. Under the old South Africa, we had a constitution that didn't allow for black people to vote in general elections and so forth, only over certain areas. And we had the apartheid laws and rules. And then we got the new South Africa and we got a true democracy. And now we are all new South Africans. Now, if I would say to someone, listen, I want your life to change because you are now in a new South Africa. Be changed in the spirit of your mind. Clothe yourself with the new man that has been created in a higher form of righteousness. The moment I say that to a person, it is not. it doesn't have a lot to do with him trying to bring forth something new. It's got something to do with him repenting in his mind, believing something new and something real that has already taken place. And this is what the Apostle Paul is doing in Ephesians chapter 4. He's seeing the old man Adam and that he has died. He's seeing the old man, which was a man where there was a Jew and a Gentile, wherein righteousness was defined by obeying the covenant of the old law. And there was insiders and outsiders and so forth. But now he sees a new man, a man that was raised from the dead, a man that has conquered physical death, that is above death that is clothed in union with God. And he says, if you go and read Colossians chapter 3, he says, Behold Christ, who is your life. Have your mind set on Christ, who is your life. And if we look at that as the reality about ourselves, we are basically then walking in repentance. We are walking in the true life that God has given us. So I want to say this to you, and I bring it to myself on a regular basis. Even this morning when I sat down here and read through the scriptures preparing this daily devotional, I looked at what Jesus Christ has done and I say to myself, I cannot just deal with this as something that was written by a man about 2,000 years ago called Paul. I cannot just deal with this as a writing from the Bible wherein I gather a message together and encourage people for my Friday daily devotional. No, I sit down here and use a few minutes and ponder and think about 
this as the absolute truth, as a reality that is greater and more real than the table I sit at, at the laptop that is in front of me, than the chair that I sit on. It's more real and more lasting than that. Because this laptop, in a few years, you will find that I'll need another one. The chair that I sit on can wear out. This table can wear out. It can even become out of fashion. And you'll have to have a new one. But the truth that Jesus was raised from the dead and the new creation that took place and the rule of Christ is more real than the political situation that we have in our country. It's more real than the physical things of this world. It's more physical than the things you can touch with your hands because the things you touch with your hands can end, but the body of Christ can never end. And Paul now says, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So the new man is not something you create. It is the man God created. And we now clothe ourselves and put ourselves into that. How? By being renewed in the spirit of our mind. Being renewed in in the spirit of your mind can simply be said like this. Wake up to the reality. Don't reject the truth. Don't live in ignorance of what is truly going on. Because should you live in ignorance, if you go and read in Ephesians chapter 4 there, it would simply mean that you will be given over to lasciviousness and you will be under the power of uncleanness with all greediness. And that will destroy your life because you live in ignorance. Imagine you are in South Africa and you are living in ignorance of the new constitution and you continue continue as a faithful servant of the old constitution and you continue in that way of living. You will find yourself in jail very quickly. You'll find yourself as an enemy of the state. You'll find your life being completely destroyed. Why? Because you are not renewed in the spirit of your mind. The core from where you think has to change. So this is what the Apostle Paul did. We need to understand that he saw the resurrected Jesus. The Christ appeared to him in such a form of glory that his physical eyes were even blinded. And then after prayer, scales fell from his eyes. And he knew that what he saw he would suffer for because it's such a message of change, contradicting what people used to believe, that he would suffer for that. Uh, It became the absolute reality from where he lived. And this, and this I end off with, is what Paul said. When Jesus appeared to him, he said to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Referring to the church as his very body. And Paul saw that union. And that is the foundation from where how we live as Christians is defined in the revelation of the new man God created, not the new man we create by our own willpower, but the man God created by raising Jesus from the dead, which is God's reality about us who believe upon him. Let us look at Christ who is our life and see that as true and real and live from there. God bless.